Hello everyone, welcome to Unit 1, Day 1. Uh, today we're going to talk about key terms and definitions, all right? So before we can uh, start exploring the field of statistics, there are some uh, words and terms and stuff that are used in statistics that you really need to know about before we can start uh, talking about calculations and, and things like that concerning statistics. So uh, our goals today are to learn and understand the definitions of important and commonly used terms in the field of statistics. And we want to be able to identify those terms from a situation, right? So if I, if I told you about a study that I was going to conduct, uh, could you identify these terms in that study? And then just uh, our last goal here is just to improve research literacy. So, right, if uh, the, the main, the main uh, use of statistics is to conduct research on things, and uh, so if you were to read research that maybe has already been conducted, uh, understanding the definitions of these types of terms uh, would really help your ability to read and understand research. All right. Uh, so uh, the, the way that we're going to go about this, is I'm going to I'm going to give you an idea for a research study, and then we're going to from that research study we're going to identify uh, these particular terms. We're going to focus on population, statistic, parameter, sample variable and data okay so we want to be able to identify these things and you might think well I, I think I know some of these already and that's fine uh, but to really get the technical definition of these particular words uh, you might want to take a look at that vocabulary list that is in my open math and just kind of read those definitions right I'm not going to make a video where I read definitions to you I think you can read those on your own uh, but I would definitely read that list and then come back here and, and kind of watch this video and see how uh, I identify the population and, and things like that. All right, so let's let's give it a try. So here we go. We have a study that, uh, that was conducted at a local college to analyze the average cumulative GPA of students who graduated from that college last year. All right now it says fill in the letter of the phrase that best describes what each of the items are below. All right, so let's talk about the population. So the population, the best way to kind of define the population is to think about what is the largest group of people that would be represented by this study, all right? So we gotta look at what it is, what it is they're doing. What is this study describing? What group of people are they trying to describe with this study? And it says right here, if you look at it, they wanna analyze the cumulative GPA of students, right? So students, but not just any students, students who graduated, and not just any students who graduated, they wanted students who graduated from that college, right? So this would be the largest group that is represented by the study. It would be the students who graduated from the college last year, all right? So that would be our population. So if I'm looking through my choices here, right? So I see, I see a whole bunch of choices and I'm looking at all students who attended college last year. Well, I don't want all the students who attended college last year, I wanted all the students who attended the college and graduated, right? Because they wanted, they want the ones who graduated. So this would be a better option right here. All students who graduated from the college last year. All right, so I'm gonna put F as my choice for population. Now, the next one I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do sample because sample and population are kind of connected, right? There's a population and then when you conduct your study, you're not going to you're not going to go and collect data from every single person in the population. Instead, you're going to get a subset of that population. Like maybe you might survey 20 people or 30 people from that population. You might go and find 20 students who graduated from that college last year and ask them what their cumulative GPA is. All right. So I'm looking here at Part D, a group of students who graduated from the college last year who were randomly selected. Okay, so they didn't tell us how many were selected, but that's okay. We know it's a group of the students who did graduate. It's not all of them, right? So that becomes my sample. These are the students I'm going to ask for information from, all right? So then we're going to talk about statistic and parameter here, and these two are kind of linked link together. <laughs> I'm sorry. So a statistic is a statistical measure, right, like a mean or average and those are the same thing uh, a proportion uh, those are statistical measures and we want that statistical measure to be related to either the population or the sample all right so if the statistical measure it describes the population we say it's a parameter if the statistical measure describes the sample then it is a statistic all right 
So I'm looking here at Part B, right? So Part B says the cumulative GPA of one student. Well, that's not the population because that's only one student. Uh, we have the average cumulative GPA of students who graduated from the college last year. So this would be our parameter. Right? So the average cumulative GPA of students who graduated from college last year, that is a statistical measure, right? The cumulative GPA is a, is a measure and it's for all the students who graduated last year. So this is our parameter. Right, and then we have down here the average cumulative GPA of students in the study who graduated from the college last year. Now notice the keywords here, students in the study. It's not just all students, it's only the students that participate in the study. That's our sample, or I'm sorry, our statistic. I'm gonna put G there, all right? Now, our variable would be the cumulative GPA of one student, right? This would be part B, the cumulative GPA of one student who graduated from college last year, all right? So when we think about it, if I walk up to a person and I say, you know, what's your cumulative GPA? Uh, that one response has a variable uh, number that it could be, right? So that's why we call it a variable. They could say, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, the number that they give you has the ability to vary. All right, so that's why we say when we look for a variable, we're looking for this key word of one, okay? When we're looking for a, uh, a parameter, we're looking for the keyword of all, right? So we're looking for the average cumulative GPA of all students, right? And they didn't put that in there for us, but uh, they're, that's what they're specifying there in Part A. And when we're looking for a statistic, we're looking for students in the study. Like, we'll be looking for either a number of students or they'll specify just the students in the study. Okay? So our variable is going to be option B. Now, the data is the actual numbers that you collect. So when you walk up to someone and you say, okay, what's your cumulative GPA? They're going to give you a number and you're going to write down that number, right? So let's say the first person gave you a 3.65. The next person said my GPA was a 2.8. The next person says my GPA was a 1.5. And you start listing those numbers. Those numbers that you collect, that is the data, okay? So that is going to be C. All right, so it's, like I said, quick and dirty rundown of those uh, of those particular terms, like I said, I loosely defined them. The, the super technical, precise definitions are in that vocabulary list that are on my open math. All right, so I'm going to do another one here. Let's go through another one. This one's a little bit different in that we're going to write our description of the population ourselves. Okay, so I got this set up to where I can just type in. And I also gave you a document, a, a Word doc that you can also type into so you don't have to, you know, write, like hand write all this stuff because it does get to be a little bit much. All right, so it says, we want to know the average amount uh, of money that first-year college students spend at ABC College on school supplies that do not include books. All right, so we randomly survey 100 first-year students at the college. Three of those students spent 150, 200, and 225, respectively. So if I wanted to describe the population, I'm trying to describe the largest group of people that could be represented by the study. And they, they literally tell you that here, right? It's the first year college students at ABC College, okay? So this, this study is only representative of first year college students at ABC College. So we're gonna say all first year college students at ABC College. And remember, when we talk about population, that key word is all. Okay. And we want to be specific. We don't just want any college students. We want first-year college students. And we don't just want any first-year college students. We want the first-year college students at ABC College. All right. So the, the, the wording has to be precise to get it correct. All right. Now, the sample are the ones that we select from the population. We're going to go out to this college, and we're going to, we're going to not ask every first-year college student. We're going to ask a subset of them. All right, so that's gonna be our sample. And they tell us right here that they are going to sample 100 first year college students. So we're gonna say 100 randomly selected first year college students 
at ABC College. We don't want to randomly select just any college students. We want to make sure they're first year college students and we want to make sure they go to ABC College. All right, so this 100 and this is just 100. This is all of them, right? So you see the difference between the population and the sample there. So the parameter is going to be the average amount of money. That's our statistical measure. But it's going to be the average amount of money spent on school supplies. Not just any money that was spent. It has to be money that was spent on school supplies that do not include books by, right, now who's spending this money is important, right? It's the average amount of money spent on school supplies that do not include books by all first year college students, right? Again, that keyword being all. Okay, so all first year college students at ABC College. So then a statistic is easy to define because a statistic relates to the sample. Right, so now we're not looking at all of the first year college students. I want to know the average amount of money spent by specifically these 100 randomly selected students. So I'm going to say almost the same thing. Watch, my, watch the difference in my wording. The average amount of money spent on school supplies that do not include books by the 100 randomly selected college students at ABC College. All right, so you see I went from all to the 100 that I randomly selected. And now to get my variable, right? So if I walk up to someone and I say, okay, how much money did you spend, right? I'm walking up to one college student and I'm saying, how much money did you spend on those school supplies? They're gonna give me a number. That, that number has the ability to be any uh, variable amount of money, okay? So it's almost the same thing here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste this to show you how similar it is. I'm going to put this right into my definition for the variable, but I'm going to change this from all to one. And that is our variable. It's the average amount of money spent on school supplies that do not include books by one first year college student at ABC College. All right, now our data is literally the numbers that we write down, right? So the numbers that we collect as we ask those students how much money they spent, uh, that is our raw data, okay? So I know it seems like, man, we're being really picky about language, but that is part of the game with statistics. Language has to be precise. It's, it's actually true throughout all of mathematics because one changed little word can, can change how you calculate things or what population is represented. Uh, so uh, language is extremely important, especially when we talk about research. All right. So we're going to do it one more time. Very similar type of study. Uh, we want to know the average amount of money spent on school uniforms each year by families with children at Knoll Academy. We randomly survey 100 families with children in the school. And then we got some numbers here. Three of the families spent 65, 75, and 95. Okay, so here I go. I'm going to determine my population. So I'm thinking about, again, what is that largest group that is represented uh, by this study? And it's specifically going to be uh, families with children at Knoll Academy, right? We don't just want any families. We want families with children. And we don't just want any families with children. We want families with children at Knoll Academy. Okay, so I can practically copy and paste this, right? But I'm going to make sure that I say, all families with children at Knoll Academy. The sample is going to be the 100 that we randomly survey. All right, so I'm going to say 100 randomly surveyed families, right? And then I can just take this and put that in there, right? 100 randomly surveyed families with children at Knoll Academy. Okay. Now, remember, the parameter is a statistical measure of the population. Okay, so we, the statistical measure here is either the average or the mean. Those two words are synonymous, okay, so they both represent the same thing. You can pick either one, all right? So we're going to say, I'm going to use the word mean. So I'm going to say the mean amount of money spent on school uniforms, right? 
by each family with children at Knoll Academy. Okay. The mean amount of money by each family. Should I say each family? I should say by all families, right? So we want to say by all families. Again, that key word, since we're describing something about a population, we want to make sure that word all is in there somewhere. Okay. Now, to get my statistic, I can take the same thing because the statistic is still a, a numerical measure, right, or a statistical measure. So it's almost the same exact thing, but it's specific to the 100 that I randomly surveyed. So I'm going to get rid of the all, and I'm going to say by the 100 randomly surveyed families with children at Knoll Academy. And then remember, the variable takes it down even further. It's almost the same exact thing, but instead of all, I'm going to put one. Right? So you see that difference between those three things, right? So if I go to a family and I say, how much money did you spend on school uniforms? They're gonna give me an amount of money that can vary, all right? Then the data is the actual numbers that we get when we ask them that question. Right? This is our raw data, the 65, 75, and the $95. All right, so that's three examples that I did there with you. Hopefully some of those uh, make sense. But when you get to my open math, you're gonna get an exercise very similar to this where they describe a situation and your job is to kind of go through and make sure that you can describe each of these things, okay? So uh, if you have any questions about that, let me know. I gave you one more example down here. It's already filled in. So if you printed these out or you opened it up, it should have already been filled in, but it's one more example for you to just read and try and give you a little bit more resources. Um, you know, like here in the population, I kind of added in that question that you need to ask yourself because sometimes identifying the population can be a little bit difficult. Um, so just constantly ask yourself, what is the largest group uh, that is represented by this study, right? What's the largest group of people uh, or items or individuals that are being represented in the study and, and see how, how expansive of a group you can get to with all the restrictions that they put in the description, okay? All right, guys, I'm going to let you give uh, some of these problems a try, and like I said, I'll be in the Zoom chat ready to answer your questions. Good luck.